On my last video, we looked at examples of typical things that you can see for flight performance issues with a seven inch quadcopter. We use this aqua quad to represent those examples of issues. And then I went and asked you to put in the comments what you thought the problems were. I was really surprised with how many people were on track with that. And we left off on that video with simply upgrading the firmware from Betaflight 4.1 to Betaflight 4.3, the latest release. And we tried to put the same settings back on it at the exit of that video. And I was gonna show in this one if that made any difference. Does upgrading firmware actually make any flight performance difference? So in today's video, we're gonna review some of those comments. We're gonna review the result of that simple upgrade in firmware. And if the upgrade from Betaflight 4.1 to 4.3 simply didn't solve the issues, well, we're gonna do some tuning and we're gonna lick those problems once and for all. So the very first comment was iTerm Relax. And iTerm Relax isn't gonna be it. That's uh, gonna be a bounce back thing. So if you have wobbles, iTerm Relax is not it. If you have a bounce back, like a slow bounce back in a flip or a roll, that would be iTerm Relax. You wanna reduce that iTerm Relax cutoff, usually five points at a time is what I'd do. This comment here, uh, too low P and D2, uh, they're right on the money. So yeah, having P, it's basically the P to I ratio. So. Uh, I term when you see wobbles like a slow wobble in a tune anything slow it's I term always slow bounce back I term problem slow wobble I term problem so the way the only way to really solve that is to increase your P term and then if you increase your P term you're gonna get you could potentially get P term bounce back which would be a really fast bounce back or a fast oscillation or flutter, and then you have to increase D. So what you really need to do is if you're gonna increase P, you gotta bring D up with it, or simply use the slider and move down the drift wobble slider, which just simply moves down I term. Now, another thing before you jump to doing that is you wanna check your ESC PWM frequency. So uh, if your PWM frequency is too high and you have a lot of wobbles, you want to reduce that ESC PWM frequency. A lot of people are, you know, running uh, 96 kilohertz, 128 kilohertz with new ESCs, even 48 kilohertz. You know, on these big quads, you want to be running 24 kilohertz, 16 kilohertz, something of that nature for your ESC, and that's going to give it more braking torque, which is going to uh, can help with fixing that wobble issue. So instead of trying to um, do it with the PIDs, I would definitely recommend doing it with ESC changes first. So we'll go ahead and check that on this. So some more here saying, you know, increase PD gains, uh, which is right on the money, or you can reduce I term, whichever. So one here for TPA and uh, TPA is just going to, in default beta flight, it's just gonna fluctuate the D term. So low wobble stuff has nothing to do with the D term. Um, so yeah, unless you would change that in beta flight to be the P and D term, which is in the CLI, if just in default, it just influences the D term. TPA would be if you have a normal forward flight that everything is fine, but when you gun it, it sh oscillates and shakes. Well, one thing you can do is filtering, but it's kind of tough. You know, if you're in, if you have conservative filtering already, you know, it's kind of tough to really whack it. One thing you can do with TPA is get more aggressive with that since it reduces the D term. So as you go maybe above 50% throttle, it ramps your D term down so that, um, you know, the quad's shaking more that the D term's not adding to that. So uh, that's where I would use uh, TPA or really I like to call it TPD anymore uh, with the default action of it. Now one comment here was talking about dynamic idle and I don't really see that helping with wobbles that much. Maybe on the fringes, but it's really an I term. Again, if you see slow wobbly things, reduce that ESC PDVM frequency if that doesn't fix it or whatnot, then you know, you got to reduce that I term or raise the P and D term together. One or the other, because it's that ratio between I and P term and then D goes along for the ride. If you raise P, you got to raise D or if you just lower I, that's OK as well. Somebody was a little PO that I didn't give me the answer. Patience, my friend, patience. They'll love this video, I guess, hopefully. I don't know. Oh, here's one right here. Wobble fix 16 kilohertz low PWM frequency. So yes, this would be the first thing I would check. Again, that PWM frequency. So really good answer on that one. So this comment invoked uh, talking about feed forward. And yeah, feed forward is not going to solve a wobble like that because 
Uh, again, it's not a bounce back. So yeah, if you have some bounce back, one instead of reducing I term relax, one thing you could do technically is crank up feed forward so you don't have as much delay and then you wouldn't need to reduce I term relax. So feed forward, that, that theoretically there. But this again, this is not bounce back. This is I'm getting on the throttle, I drop the throttle, and then the thing goes wobble. So feed forward's not active at all because feed forward only does anything when you move the sticks fast. It's not even moving the sticks slow. It only matters when you move the sticks fast. So if you have some sort of weird behavior when you're moving the sticks fast, then then you might be thinking about feed forward. But uh, yeah, and this wobble things, not feed forward. And the last question here, uh, no, I did not run up out of ideas. So anyways, hopefully going through those questions, you can see uh, running through it. So with that, uh, with this video, uh, hopefully you'll see the ideas and we're gonna talk about a couple of bit more. But let's check out if simply flashing Betaflight 4.3 made any difference. You know, is firmware upgrades, you know, actually useful? Do those make any differences? You can see it's a little shaky. Now, like I said, it's breezy and windy today. So let's, uh, I don't necessarily see any bounce back, but you can see wobble. You have to excuse me, I didn't put my rates in. So uh, I don't see any bounce back per se, but man, wobble city, right? Not so much throbbles either, just wobbles. Pop washers. Prop wash isn't actually too bad. So it's the same day, picking up where we left off with tuning this bad boy. This is our waterproof rig, seven inch. We made upgrades from Betaflight 4.1 to 4.3, uh, we, but we tried to put all the same settings on it that we had before. Let's just see how she goes. It's, uh, it's important that it's the same day because it's kind of windy out here. I don't know if you can kind of see grass and everything moving, but it's, it's a breezy day, so I wanted to get back out. Uh, for better equivalency. So yeah, let's get into it. So for the record, I don't think it's gonna be much better. Let's see. Still see that wind pushing on it. Oddly enough, that, uh, that drift of the pitch axis is not there, that's crazy. Huh, look at that. Still a little wobbly. Uh, but it's not as wobbly. Look at that. Huh. I'm serious, I thought it would be about the same. A couple of... Uh... Yeah, I mean, it's still there. Yeah, it's still wobbly, of course. I'm gonna do some stuff. I didn't do it before the step moves. Look at the, uh, look at the wind. You can kind of see it blowing me laterally. Can you see that? <laughs> it's definitely windy. That's, uh, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, so there's the step moves. See the wobble. The wobble does not seem as bad to me. And the pitch drift is not nearly as bad. So after seeing that change, uh, I was sur surprised that Betaflight for just flashing the me, me personally. I know Betaflight makes flight performance improvements, but I was shocked in that specific thing, the wobbles that uh, that upgrade make made any difference. So uh, pleasantly surprised, but surprised nevertheless. So true to my word, the next thing I 
brought up is checking out the ESC PDBM frequency. And this was the ESC settings it came to me on. So uh, if you can see on there, I one thing jumped out to me right away. Boom, 96 kilohertz PDBM. No bueno, buddy. That is no good for a seven inch. Maybe that's okay for a whoop, but uh, yeah, you don't need it on a seven inch, especially lower KV motors. Um, just it reduces low end torque. So we're gonna bring that down. Now, unfortunately with this ESC, I could not bring it down any lower than 48 kilohertz. Personally, I would not put on ESCs that can't go below 48 kilohertz with uh, bigger quadcopters. You wanna be able to go down to 16 or 24 kilohertz on, on the bigger ones. So I ended up flashing it up to the latest BL Heli 32.9 and then reducing it down to the lowest ESC PDBM frequency, which you can see right here as 48 kilohertz. And I'm not going to do the 48 kilohertz and then buy RPM. I don't need it to go any higher uh, with the lower KV motors. We're going to be below that aliasing uh, point anyways. Uh, the other thing I did is went to motor timing of 16 degrees on that as locked versus uh, auto. So we loaded up those ESC settings. And then the other thing I went and did in Betaflight 4.3 is went and loaded my six, seven inch preset. So to get those, simply go down to UAV Tech here for the author, and then go ahead and click Tunes. And then you'll see it kind of filtered down. And this is the six, seven inch preset I have here. Uh, in here, I gave it the full Monty of options. So I gave it, uh, you know, 48 kilohertz PWM, so I click that on because that's what we're at. Uh, it had RPM filtering on it, so I left that on there and then also added on a little icing on the cake dynamic idle. Now with those settings, I did need to come in here and reduce the anti-gravity gain, and I probably need to change this on my preset, but uh, anything above for this quadcopter five, uh, and it would get uh, oscillations and shakes. So what I recommend is if you have any throttles in your flight performance where you're pumping the throttle or you're going up and getting off the throttle and you can see the nose kind of moving around, uh, what you wanna do is increase your anti-gravity gain. And it's very easy to tune in Betaflight 4.3 because you can just keep moving it up. And at some point you'll get to a spot where you go up, you drop throttle quick and it will it'll go brrr, and it will shudder a little bit um, before it then starts to descend. And that's how you know it's you're, you've gone too far. So it's very easy to tune because uh, you just keep moving it up, moving it up until you know the throttles will keep getting better and better and better. And then you get to the spot where you'll chop throttle real fast and you'll see it. Brrr, and then yeah, at that point you have to uh, you know back it down a little bit. So on this quad that seemed to be about five or 5.5, .5, maybe six at the most. So five was on this, and I probably need to reduce that in the default. So that's the one change. The only other change is I did go in and set my TPA to 1600 and then put this at 0.8. And the reason I wanted to do that is I noticed that at very high throttles, like 100% throttle, and we looked at that logging uh, in the previous video, so check that out. Uh, above 60% throttle, there was a lot more noise with this quad, so I wanted to get that D-term kind of suppressed. So this will make the D-term gains 80% reduced at 100% throttle. That will start at 60% throttle, uh, where it starts to linear reduce D-term uh, until it gets to an 80% reduction at 100. The other things left completely alone. So this next flight is checking out Betaflight 4.3 with my preset with 48 kilohertz uh, PDOM frequency. Let's see how she does. Okay, doke. So here is with my preset. I don't see any of the wobble. It's dropping. Yeah, so I don't, ah, uh, touch maybe. Just a touch. Yeah. Could just be a touch. It's uh, those seem nice and sharp. Now this is my preset too with uh, full, full uh, options like RPM filter and everything. So it's the full monkey. 
RPM filter, dynamic idle. And I don't see any wobble. Those look pretty good, so yeah, let's check out Pop Warp. That looks pretty damn good. Damn. I really try to draw it out. Then I get some. But man, just then Sip West turns nothing. Let's, let's check out Smooth Forward Flight. Let's run the bases here. Smooth forward off the sticks. Coming into a little contention there with the tree, of course. Man, wash is decent. Yeah. Not too good on inverted yaw spins with this DJI controller for sure. So let's uh, check out Smooth again. Now this is uh, no win today. Still got, I still need to do some of that. Uh, the uh, yeah, it's still got the drift forward a little bit. You can see. I still need to do that, but it seems pretty smooth. And these seven inches really make some distance. This is really fun. Anyways, oh, 19 volts. So yeah, run the park truck today. All right, so that is uh, what you can see for difference. I mean, uh, we got improvement just they're flashing up to Betaflight 4.3 right off the bat, which is odd for me. I did not think that would be the case. And then um, just <laughs> applying presets, you know, apply like the, I really like my preset on uh, on there. So uh, six inch, seven inch preset on a six inch, seven inch. My anti gravity in my preset is too high. I think it's at ten. So you may need to bring that down. Uh, I probably will change that in my preset to come down. Uh, like this one, it can't be really any more than five, so I think five. But don't be afraid if you have throbbles to move anti gravity up. And now that it boosts P and I at the same time, you will be able to tell uh, really easily once you've gone, once you kind of have that at the max, because you'll see that shut, that shimmer when you jump off the throttle. So hopefully these tips helped with you know tuning your six inch, seven inch quadcopter and some of the things you can look for. Um, as of right now, I gotta go take this truck back. I'm doing that right now. Um, this is so cool. The Boy Scouts are camping. Uh, we had a, a park cleanup day today, uh, spring cleaning. After the Earth Day celebration, and the Boy Scouts are out here camping. We painted all kinds of stuff. It was awesome. So anyways, with that, thanks everybody. Hope this helps. We'll see you on the next one.